Well, hey there, uh, fellow Fastlane uh, e-newsletter editors. Uh, this is Rob from uh, Seattle area, Washington State. Um, I just thought I'd throw together a little bit of uh, kind of instructional video on setting up a list with MailChimp and just kind of walking through their user interface a little bit. So you'll notice um, I have my browser open, which is Chrome, but if you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer, it'll probably look a little bit different. But I'm gonna just going to go up here off the screen a little bit, type in the MailChimp.com URL address, and you'll notice this screen here. It's got um, it's got a little bit of promotional stuff going on down here. This changes from time to time. When you come to the site, this one's a little bit uh, distracting. There's an animation thing going on, but We'll click on the link over here for login. Uh, probably type it. Yeah, helps if you uh, type in the right password. <coughs> So then you'll get in here and you'll see your dashboard. Uh, you'll see this menu navigation across the top. This, this changes from time to time depending on where you are in the site. Sometimes you'll get into these step-by-step um, -step instructional kind of process workflow that um, it's a little, um, a little hard to tell where you are. But <clears throat> one thing you can always do, almost always, is um, if you're kind of stuck and you want to get back to your dashboard, uh, you can always hover over this MailChimp logo in the top left and click on it and it'll bring you back. Uh, but we'll go ahead and click on the lists link here. And you'll again you'll see you'll see, usually we'll see a couple different ways of doing things when you start getting into um, this environment and you'll usually see like a, a create list over here. Uh, or if you're in the campaigns, it might the same area will say create campaign. It'll have your list of campaigns, and then you also often get these other helpful um, ways of, of doing what you want to do. And a lot of times you'll see a link for a video, which is good if you kind of forgotten uh, the process, or you just want to be reminded, or it's the first time you've done a particular thing. But we're going to go ahead and click on this button create your first list and you'll notice you know you've probably seen this a lot but if you notice a little red asterisk here it says over here that it's required so we're gonna give it a name so fast lean you can name it whatever you want nobody sees this but you um, you're probably ever gonna only need <coughs> one list um, it's really not uh, it's really hard to um, see why you would need more than one. I can't think of a great reason because with <clears throat> any list that you create you can also create groups within that list and then you can target those groups with a particular campaign. So if you wanted to have a group for a particular state on your list, so you would have one master list with everybody in it and then if you had you know state information on people on your list you could create a group for your for any particular state and and uh, target them um, so we're gonna go ahead and put your from name here so this is actually gonna be your email address so this gets uh, I'm sorry it's not your email address your, it's your from name that gets displayed in the user's um, inbox when uh, the email lands in it and if you don't put this in here then they'll just see your email address they're making it required because it's a it's kind of a email best practice to to have it <coughs> an actual name that it comes from so then for the apply to email this is your actual email address default subject we're going to leave blank there's really no point in that um, this little section here is, is very important it's actually goes um, on the bottom of your emails every email you send out a statement that 
tells uh, that reassures people that uh, you know they didn't just get some blind email off some rented list or something and you know the reason this is so important is because of the anti-spam laws and uh, the uh, requirement that people on your list are opted in or you know um, ex implicitly um, subscribe to your list now that doesn't mean to say that if you've got a friend of a friend who gave you someone's email address that says you know this person is interested in Fastlane you know go ahead and add them but what I would probably do before actually adding them to your list is just firing off an email to them from your regular desktop email application and tell them you've got their name and ask them if it's okay if they if you add them to their list to your list um, just a real um, important thing to do these days so I'm gonna they have an example down below here I'm just gonna pretty much type it pretty close to what they suggest Uh, helps uh, spell it right. I got a little auto corrector in my browser. Email as you express interest in fast lane. Um, you scroll down. About the only other thing that might be useful for, for you is if you click this box here for daily summary. You can also collect either one of these, but what they uh, what this is, it'll, you'll get notifications sent to you anytime someone opts out or unsubscribes from your list, or if they actually subscribe. So it's good, useful, good, good information to know. I wouldn't worry about this checkbox here because <coughs> your uh, most of your 99% uh, yeah, of users can can deal with HTML email now, and e even if they can't, the beauty of this system is that it automatically creates a, a text only email plain text email every time you create a new campaign so you're going to be you're going to be editing and creating an HTML version and it's going to uh, do its best to strip out you know the images and that kind of thing and it does a pretty good job at that so what happens is then when that email gets sent out if uh, a person's email reader is not capable of reading the multimedia type format or HTML format at a default to the text only so you're actually sending out both versions each time uh, and then relying on or allowing the user's email application to decide on which one uh, most of them don't really understand that that's even happening but just know that uh, it does <laughs> so if you click the Save button you're gonna get to this screen now so you're on your your You'll notice you're on your list screen up here, um, and you'll you'll see this area. This is like the first time you've created a list, so you generally won't see that this portion after you've uh, gone through this process. And you'll kind of your page will look more like this, with the name of your list here and the fact that you got zero subscribers. Um, but we're going to go ahead and import contacts. So you should have gotten an email that described um, how to set up your com contacts in a list, uh, depending on what f system you have and how they're stored right now. Um, but we're going to import from a file, in, in this case, uh, it's a file that I have been putting together, um, and it's in a CSV format. So if you've got uh, program like Microsoft Excel or some other ones spreadsheets you can use it to put your data in row by row column by column and then save that out as a CSV file which is a common um, text file but in a uh, particular format for for column style data and in this case that's how I've set mine up so I'm going to click on upload from file Click the browse button over here. Scroll down. You probably can't see out the screen here, but uh, I've got my file highlighted. That shows that it's going to be this one we're going to import. We'll click on import list. So <coughs> you'll see that it'll um, sometimes it'll take a while, but with with our small list, 
it's not uh, doesn't take very long at all so it's looked at my data and it's looked at the columns and it's going to see, you know there's three columns of data here um, <clears throat> the importance of having first and last name if you can get it is is really high just because um, with your emails when you send them out if you have first name of the person in your list of each person it will personalize the subject you can set it up so that it personalizes the subject line so that uh, it really just gives a little bit extra um, touch and pizzazz to the message or to your emails that you know you this person knows that you know their you know them by name kind of thing so in this case um, it got it wrong be just because my file had last name in the first column and first name in the second column so it's allowing you to make that correction here so if you just click that say last name uh, we'll click OK and it'll move over this is first name and click OK and click OK there and then click on done now we've got 92 subscribers on our list that's how many exactly that were in my file um, this list health portion of the screen <coughs> this will become important after you start sending email campaigns because you'll know for every single campaign that you send out every single email how many um, unsubscribes you got from that email uh, how many people opened it the, the kind of the industry average is boy it's been a few years but I think it's probably 20 to 30 percent it's actually I think much lower than that for commercial emails but uh, for nonprofits and, and for people that are kind of identify with a cause kind of thing it's, it's actually quite higher for the open rate and the click rate is oh, at, on your best emails it's gonna be it's it's always gonna be, usually always gonna be under 10% but 5% uh, is really good <clears throat> if you can get click rate and then what click rate is is if you have links inside your email going to you know an article or something on on a home page or in a Facebook account or something like that uh, the click rate is for each one of those um, links that you have on your page it'll track how many people actually click on each one of them um, and there's some more information down here this of course this is all blank because I've not sent anything out so that's pretty much it for uh, importing a list and if we go back to our dashboard then we can actually see a couple different new options here because I, now that I've actually got a list um, but that's it for now and then we'll uh, walk through creating a campaign next thank you